Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. The Idaho murder weapon, has it been found? Well, right there at the top of the list, at item number one, is a solitary word. Knife. Is it a K-bar knife? Is it a knife with or without a sheath? It doesn't say, but the fact that it's number one on this list is interesting. If it is a K-bar knife, then it may be the murder weapon after all. Now, besides a knife, there's a .40 caliber gun. It's a, if I'm reading it right, a Glock 22 Gen 5, including three empty magazines that were seized. I think it's safe to assume the green leafy substance in a plastic bag is marijuana, although I suppose it's possible that it might be herbal tea as well. So here is the evidence list, 19 items. To be honest, I'm more interested in Koberger's digital breadcrumbs than this stuff, but who knows what he underlined inside a book on page 118, right? Page 118 inside a book, that's item number two. And one does wonder, are these listed to some extent in order of importance? And then also, what other books um, were, did the cops confiscate? Uh, item number 15 just refers to books. Item 16 is also interesting, black face masks. We know from what Dee said that she saw a man with bushy eyebrows wearing a face mask. But of all the items listed, I find 4 and 10 the most interesting. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment, and let's get started. So what are items 4 and 10? Item 4 is the gun, and 10 possible drugs. Now, what this shows is that the suspect here could have elected to kill everyone in the house quickly and effectively with a handgun. In other words, you have a potential scenario here where he took an executive decision and he said, knife, gun, knife, gun, knife, gun, and I intend to do this and that, and this is the um, effect that I want to create. I want to say something via this crime and what will be more impressive what will be more um, intimidating what will leave more of an impression what do you think the answer is to that and so although he could have dispatched those that he that he killed more effectively with a handgun i think he bargained on the idea that he could be stealthy that he could get in and out without being heard. And do you think he succeeded in that? you think he was stealthy? For the most part, it appears that he failed, except that D and B, the survivors, even though they were there and inside the house, they didn't actually seem to know what was happening. So although he um, woke the dog up and, and there were sounds heard on a recording, and he seemed to do disturb D and perhaps even um, Ethan and, and Zanna as well, um, it, it seemed that he failed in terms of his stealth attack. Except that, that D, even though she was awake, didn't seem to know what was happening. Now, if the suspect used a gun, they would have known, meaning D and B would have known um, that something was happening, assuming that they survived. So the fact that the, and I mean, think about it, you sh fire one shot in a three-story house, isn't the person right at the bottom likely to run out the door before you get to them because that you've woken them up? And I think he was trying to count on a systematic one-by-one -one sort of assassination, except that he basically failed after his first attack with the very first victim, Kaylee. So the fact that the suspect chose to use a knife shows, I also think, that he wanted to take sadistic enjoyment in what he was doing. He also wanted to send a message to the community. And I think he mistakenly assumed everyone in the house were females as well. He didn't count on Ethan being there and perhaps not Kaylee either. Who knows, perhaps his intended target was only Maddie. Perhaps he wanted to engage with only her in her bedroom but then there was someone else there and then things got out of hand now it's not a surprise that Koberger was likely still using drugs at the time of the incident in fact 
it would be surprising if he if he wasn't. But it is useful that we have what appears to be confirmation that the drug narrative that's in item number ten, that the drug narrative was still holding a kind of maladaptive sway over his life. Do you agree with that? And now the following was removed from Koberger's vehicle. Swabs, Ziploc bag with a pink zipper, um, plastic baggie with green zipper, dimes, nickels, pennies, gloves, receipts, car insurance card, car registration, hiking boots, comfort in room key holder, and stay information. By the way, in the Chris Watts case, they also found boots in his vehicle. Uh, tire irons, a shovel, goggles, floor mats, reflective vest. Uh, I, I really not quite sure what they mean by goggles. Is that night vision goggles, swimming goggles, what sort of goggles? Um, used water bottles, a wrench, door panel, seat, seat cushions, headrest, seat belt, visor, fiber. I'm not quite sure what that refers to. Fibers, I guess. Maybe it was hoovered up, a brake pedal, gas pedal, phone charger, a band-aid, one wonders what that's about, um, wrappers, maps, documents, seatbelt, boot. So the, the fact that seats, visors, a door panel, right, that's part of the body of the vehicle, brake and gas pedals, headrest and the seatbelt were removed, suggests I think that the cops tore the Elantra apart in search of evidence. Do you agree with that? So what do you think? Do you think they found the actual murder weapon here? Do you think Koberger was lazy or clumsy? Do you think they actually found the the murder weapon here? Personally, I doubt it. Personally, I would imagine he wouldn't be that stupid. But you, you would also imagine to be safe, law enforcement likely seized all the knives they could find, including a pocket knife. I think it's a Smith & Wesson pocket knife. Now, our impression of Koberger, you know, thus far he has surprised many for being as dumb as he has been, right, despite studying a PhD in criminology. You know, one of the dumb things he did was he turned his phone on, um, allegedly, on his way back from the crime, thus helping to paint the picture of his movements uh, that morning. So... If the murder weapon is actually located, this will be further proof that he isn't the sharpest tool in the, in the shed. Time will tell. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.